Hello everyone. Welcome to the e Shikshana program. So I'm Dr. Andre Pallavi, working as a Dean Engineering Professor and HOD at RNSIT Bangalore. I'll be handling microwaves and antennas with the subject code ATMEC63. And in that, module five. So syllabus of module five consists of this loop and horn antennas. So under loop antennas, we're talking about the introduction, the small loop, then uh, the loop antenna, the small loop. Uh, after the small loop, we are talking about the antenna, small loop antenna. Then we are talking about the antenna general case the loop antenna general case and as a special case wherein now we ensure that the general case turns to that of a small loop uh, when you include a certain conditions. Then we are talking about the radiation resistance of the loops. This is required to find the power, then the directivity of uh, the loop antennas. Next comes the horn antennas and the rectangular horn antennas. The syllabus continues with antennas types. That's in chapter eight, wherein we talk about the helix geometry, the different helix mode, then the practical design consideration for the monofilar axial mode helical antenna, the Aguda array, the parabolic reflector. So as you see that uh, the material has been picked up from text three. And uh, in text three, you have this chapter one, seven, so 7.1, 7.2, they're given the subsections also. The subsections correspond to these headings. Okay, 7.919 and 7.20, 7.19, 7.20, uh, correspond to horn antennas. Similarly, 8.3 to 8.5 consists of the helix uh, geometry or the helical antenna. Then you have 8.8, .8, that's your ARQD array. And the last chapter is about the parabolic reflector. So the text three that we're talking about is nothing but antennas and wave propagation, authored by John D. Cross, Ronald, and Ahmad Khan. This is a fourth edition from Agra Hill. The other textbooks for this subject include Microwave Engineering by Anna Das, Microwave Devices and Circuits by Samuel Mylio, then antennas and wave propagation that we are dealing with, which is nothing but cross. The reference books include uh, Posar that, for microwave engineering. Similarly, Shusra Das for microwave engineering. Uh, the, these two consist of module one, two, and half. Whereas the third module that is antennas and wave propagation is from Harish and Sachidananda. So we also have taken the material uh, from uh, NPTEL uh, course, we would like to acknowledge. So the NPTEL course on antennas by Professor Girish Kumar, Department of Electrical Engineering, IIT Mumbai. So the lecture consists of uh, loop antenna. Some data has been taken from this lecture also. So coming to the first part, we have the introduction and we have uh, different types of antennas. Why do we need the antennas? What are the uses of these antennas? These antennas uh, can be used as elements in an array. They can be used also feeds for corner reflectors, or they can work as parabolic reflectors or lens antenna, or they can be just antenna themselves. If I have an antenna, it can work as a self-contained antenna, or uh, if, it, if I have an array antenna, array, in that it can be an element. If it can be a corner reflector so that it will reflect the signal, then you can also have parabolic reflector or it can be a lens antenna to improve the directivity, etc. So the types of antennas include slot, loop antennas and horn antennas. So first we'll be talking about the loop antenna. So as the name indicates, the loop antenna is uh, like a circular wire or a loop of wire, and the ends of the wire are connected to a balanced transmission line. 
through the balance transmission line, you will be supplying the signal, which has to be radiated out. So the loop antenna, as you can see the figure here, it is a radio antenna consisting of a loop of wire with its ends connected to a balanced transmission line. You can say that it is a single turn coil. If you think that this whole thing is a coil, it's a single turn coil and it is carrying RF current through it. The shape of the loop can be circular, triangular, rectangular or any other shape. It can also have a, a number of turns, so it becomes a multi-turn antenna and it can be wrapped in air, the core. The core can be uh, hollow, the, in that case it is air, or it can be solid. If the core is solid, it will be a dielectric core, or it can be a ferrite material. Now, when I consider the loop antenna, generally we will be talking about the circular loop antennas. And for this circular loop antennas, what is it equivalent to? So in the previous module, you have studied this magnetic dipoles. So you can see that uh, you can say that the electric loop is equivalent to this uh, linear magnetic dipole, assuming that both of them are carrying the same current, I m. So the loop antenna is carrying a current I m, and you have a magnetic pole, a linear magnetic dipole. It is also consisting of the same current I m. Then you can say that both of them are same. So let us look at the small loop. So when you say the small loop, what does it mean? It means that the dimensions of the loop are smaller than the wavelength. So remember the wavelength is related to the frequency and how is a, a wavelength uh, related to the uh, frequency? Just remember C equal to lambda nu, C equal to lambda nu. So nu is the frequency and uh, lambda is the wavelength and C is uh, the velocity of light. This is constant. So when I have uh, the wavelength that's equal to nu by C or uh, C by nu, they are inversely related. So this is a frequency. So the frequency is in uh, gigahertz, etc. This will be in terms of uh, uh, microwaves. Okay, this will go from microwaves, uh, micrometers, they will be coming to millimeters. So the wavelength uh, for RF, so when you look at the spectrum, and so when you look at the RF spectrum, the RF spectrum is in terms of microwaves and it will go up to millimeters. If you go, it will go up to uh, millimeters. So as we see from the spectrum, RF spectrum, that uh, your frequency, the RF frequencies are in terms of uh, micrometers and also when we consider the dimensions of the coil, that should be lesser than that of the wavelength. So what do you mean? Uh, if I say, how do you represent the dimension of the coil? So if you have a coil, you represent it by uh, the radius uh, uh, R, or you can have a, a, a R is used for a different purpose in uh, antenna. So you can say it is A, so or D, any number. So the D should be lesser, lesser than lambda. Lambda is a wavelength. Wavelength is given in terms of uh, micrometers or millimeters and so on. Okay. So now let us uh, come back to this. Now, when I say that, when I say that, the dimensions of the coil are smaller than that of the wavelength. So in the end, it also has uh, the current flowing in the coil. And since it's smaller, uh, the same, we can say that the current has the same uh, phase as the uh, propagation. And uh, we also have seen that uh, uh, the uh, loops, one disadvantage is it has a poor, poor efficiency. Uh, the main applications are uh, the users uh, receiving antennas at low frequencies. So as you see that uh, when the frequencies are low, and so when the frequencies are low, then what will happen to the wavelength? Wavelength is larger. So you can uh, uh, get these small loops. So in this case, uh, the wavelength is greater greater than the D, okay, or the other way around. 
the dimensions of the coil. This is your D. This is smaller, smaller than the wavelength. So if you have to ensure that the D is smaller, smaller than the wavelength, what has to be done? That means either the wavelength is uh, quite big in terms of meters or micrometers or millimeters, etc., or uh, the frequency is less, or the frequency is less. So when do we have low frequencies in the spectrum? Generally, the AM broadcast receiver uh, will almost have this loop antennas. Almost all loop antennas are present for AM broadcast receivers. So when I'm talking about uh, a small loop, how do you define a small loop? And the small loop is also known as a magnetic loop. Its circumference uh, should be less than one tenth of a wavelength. So the C that you have should be less than lambda by 10. So what is C? C is the circumference. How do you define the circumference of a circle? The circumference of a circle is defined as 2 pi r. So 2 pi r is the circumference, r is the radius, or it can be pi into d, d is the diameter. So that should be less than uh, lambda by 10. So if this is satisfied, if this condition is satisfied, you can specify that it is a small loop. It's a small loop. So once it is small loop, automatically uh, we can say that you have a constant current distribution in, uh, in the loop. So in the loop, uh, the current distribution is uh, constant. We'll see why do we need this uh, constant current distribution. So let us look at a small loop. So when you say a loop is small, you say the small uh, loop is small or the loop antenna is a small loop when the dimensions of the coil are lesser than that of the wavelength. So how much less? And generally, uh, the circumference of the coil should be less than uh, lambda by 10. So if C is less than lambda by 10, lambda is a wavelength, or still lesser, you can say it's a small loop. And in this case, uh, the current distribution of the loop is constant. One more disadvantage of the small loop, it is of poor, poor efficiency. And if it has to maintain the dimensions of the coil smaller than the wavelength, then it has to operate at low frequencies. Lower frequencies uh, implied uh, increased wavelength so that you can have realizable uh, dimensions of the coil. And the main applications are in AM broadcast receivers. So this is one example. This is a current in the loop. And uh, uh, this is a loop antenna. Okay, the I naught is a current that is flowing in the loop, and uh, you, it is equivalent to a dipole. So the green one is your small circular loop antenna, and uh, this small circular antenna is equivalent to a magnetic dipole. So the magnetic dipole is given by this red color, uh, this magnetic dipole of length L. So these two antennas are equivalent. So when you, how is this, when we do mathematical analysis, when we do mathematical analysis, how do we analyze uh, this uh, circular loops? Do we have uh, a separate analysis? Uh, generally, what do we do is we build on the previous modules. In the previous module, we have analyzed this magnetic dipole antennas. So for this magnetic dipole antennas uh, of length L with a current I am flowing through it. So this is a magnetic dipole antenna of length L with a current I am flowing it. This is uh, centered at the origin. So this is equivalent to, this magnetic dipole antenna is equivalent to this uh, small uh, loop antenna. Small loop antenna, uh, once again, you that also has an origin at the same place and the current here that is flowing is I naught. As I said, you can also have multi-turn antennas. Instead of uh, two, uh, one antenna, one turn, you can have multiple turns. And there you also have the distance between the two uh, turns and also the thickness of the coil. And 2A is the diameter of each coil. So these are some more terms. And you see that as the frequency or the size is increased. So what happens if the frequency increases? So if the frequency increases, the wavelength decreases. Uh, remember this, 
uh, what is this? C equal to C equal to wavelength into frequency. Now, if the frequency increases, what will happen to the wavelength? The wavelength will decrease. So, what is our condition? The condition is uh, the dimensions of the coil. The dimensions of the coil should be lesser lesser than that of uh, lambda. It should be lesser lesser than that of lambda. But what is happening? Uh, I have a case uh, where uh, the frequency is increasing. Okay, you can see that uh, the frequency is increasing or, or the size, the size is your D. The size is your D or the frequency nu. If any one of them had increased, then you cannot say that uh, the loop antenna is the same as the linear dipole antenna. Why? As the size is increased, you have a standing wave and uh, this standing wave is developed in the current. Remember, the current has to keep flowing, but we have a standing wave. And uh, now the antenna will behave as a self-resonant loop uh, because of the standing wave, or it will act as a folded dipole antenna. Instead of a linear dipole antenna, it will behave as a folded dipole antenna. So the characteristics change. So if the dimensions of the loop are larger, if the dimensions of the loop are larger, that is, this is not satisfied. That is, D is almost equivalent to lambda or uh, D is greater, greater than lambda. In this case, in this case, how does the loop antenna behave? The loop antenna behaves like a self-resonant uh, loop or it will behave as a folded dipole antenna. And since uh, D is greater, greater than lambda, generally the self-resonant loop antennas are larger and uh, they are used at uh, higher frequencies, especially VHF and UHFs. So the size is manageable. And uh, their characteristics are similar to that of folded dipole antenna, it is there. So the radiation efficiency that we are talking about is also high. Uh, uh, remember in the previous case uh, for the small loop antenna, the radiation efficiency was low and we were using lower frequencies and for lower frequencies, the efficiency that we got was less. So this slide talks about uh, loop antennas. This slide talks about uh, loop antennas whose dimensions are quite bigger. Okay, this is for a small loop. This is for small loop. So when you say that it's a small loop antenna, when you say it's a small loop antenna, small loop an antenna is equal to a linear uh, dipole. Whereas uh, if I'm talking about a bigger loop, uh, wherein uh, D is greater, greater than lambda, then it is equivalent to a folded dipole. It's equivalent to a folded dipole and the loop becomes a self-resonant loop. But the radiation efficiency is quite high. And what about the current? The current is not a retarded current, rather it's a standing wave uh, uh, current. So what are the other uh, things that we have to remember? Uh, when I'm looking at uh, the radiation pattern of a loop antenna, it's in the a figure of eight or a duff note pattern. Remember your uh, dipole antenna, uh, what was uh, one? It was like this. So where was your dipole? Dipole was here. And what was the radiation pattern? Uh, it was a definite pattern or a figure of eight. And one more thing that you have to remember is the loop can be a circular or a square loop. That's fine. And uh, when I look at this loop, so this is your loop antenna, okay. And here you have a transmission line. And this is a loop uh, through which the current flows. So when this is being used as a receiver, when this is being used as a receiver, it has to receive this radiation. So perpendicular to the plane of loop, the loop, assume that the loop is lying in one particular plane. So per perpendicular to the plane, no radiation is received, okay? So this is my loop antenna. So when I'm looking at this uh, loop perpendicular to this, no uh, radiation, whereas, uh, uh, if it is in the same plane, this is in the same plane, we have maximum uh, radiation. So in this direction, you get a null. So you can see that this is uh, the one uh, perpendicular to it, 
it is null. The next thing that we have to see is uh, uh, the radiation patterns. Okay, you can see that uh, this is this is a loop, and if it's a small uh, loop, like a diameter is uh, uh, lambda by ten, or the circumference is uh, uh, pi d by ten, how do you get the circumference? Uh, the circumference uh, c is equal to uh, two pi r or pi d. Okay, two pi d. So now, what is this uh, diameter d? It is pi into lambda by ten. Okay, so so this is pi d by lambda by ten. So pi is three point one four. Three point one four divided by this. This is point three one four. And if you talk about uh, c lambda, okay, c by lambda. So this becomes uh, uh, this lambda gets cancelled, and we just have point three one four. Now this point three one four here, the c of c by lambda. Tells you that it is a small loop. So the circumference is uh, less than lambda by ten. Okay, so it's a small loop. Okay, and this is a small loop, and you get this pattern. And you keep increasing the diameter, uh, the loop becomes bigger, and you can change, see a change in the radiation pattern. And uh, and T C is still bigger. You can see a change and the diameter is still figure. Okay. So you get a different radiation patterns. So this will be similar to this uh, magnetic dipole only when uh, I have a smaller loop. Smaller loop is lambda by 10 and so on. The other parameters that we are going to cover uh, in this module is about uh, the radiation resistance of the loop antenna. Oh, uh, this is in short. Okay. When I'm talking about uh, radiation turn, I can have single turn antennas or multi turn antennas. For single turn antennas, the uh, radiation is given as 20 pi square c by lambda. Uh, c, as I said, is a circumference that is 2 pi a by lambda, the whole thing to the power 4. So that's a single turn. And for large loop, uh, uh, it is, uh, this will reduce to 60 pi square. Instead of 20 pi square, it is 60 pi square c by lambda. And remember, c by lambda is a small term here, 0 0.14, 0 0.314. Okay, you could have seen this c is equal to uh, 0.314, etc. Similarly, c by lambda is 0.314 here. And a small one to the raised to the square or 4, or to the power of four, this is still a smaller term and the radiation is very less. So you can see that uh, one example of C by lambda is 0.1, uh, the, the resistance that we get, I'm sorry, the resistance that we get is very less, something like 0.02 ohms. And if I have a multi-turn antenna or this goes up for a large loop, okay, for the large loop, you can see that it is 60 pi square C by lambda and uh, this becomes a very huge number. Or if it's a multi-turn, the whole thing has to be multiplied by n squared. If n is 50, 50 squared, it is 50 ohms. So the radiation plays a very important role. And we would like to have a very low uh, resistance, especially for the power uh, case. So we have this, uh, the radiated power. The radiated power is given by 1 by 2 r into the current square, square of the current. So this is one example which tells you the same thing to 20 pi square, uh, that's c by lambda. Instead of p c by lambda, you can also use the term k a to the power four. So instead of circumference, uh, we are using k. Okay, k is two pi a by lambda. Same thing, c is two pi a by lambda. So here you have two pi a by lambda. This is your k. It's the same thing. And uh, here you are using the radius instead of the diameter. And so that will be 0.2. So you get uh, 0.316 uh, ohms. And the current will be, uh, the current required will be the P radiate divided. That will be 7.95 amps. So for large loop antennas, uh, we don't have a general ex uh, expression. Okay. Uh, we can also use this approximate expression, 60 pi square C by lambda. So you are finding the current required to radiate 10 watts uh, when the circumference is lambda by 5. 
So the to radiate 10 watts, you need uh, 7.95 amps. And the same thing, for example, if you have, if you increase resistance R, okay, the current requirement uh, comes down. And what about the radiation pattern? Uh, the radiation pattern is similar to that of a dipole antenna. The only thing you need to remember is in dipole antenna, if we have uh, in dipole antenna, we have uh, E theta and H phi. Uh, this is for dipole antenna. Uh, whereas uh, for loop antenna, they become interchanged. So for uh, loop antenna, for loop antenna, uh, e will become H, H will become E. So you will get E phi and uh, H uh, theta or H naught. So for loop antenna, we get a E phi or H theta. So you can see that these two are interchanged. Uh, the electric field and the H field and the E field are just interchanged uh, between the small loop antenna and the linear dipole antenna. So the linear dipole antenna and the loop antennas, uh, there uh, you can see that E field and H field are just uh, interchanged. And you can see this radiation pattern. So at the normal site, okay. So when it is, uh, there is no radiation that is given by dark blue when it is perpendicular to the loop. So this is 90, 90 degrees. So this 90, 90 degrees is perpendicular to this. So you see that there's a least radiation. So this radiation pattern is for two different frequencies. One is 1.32 gigahertz, the other is 2.55 gigahertz. And the circumference was uh, equal to lambda. And then, and then uh, you can see that the radiation pattern from the DOF node is slightly changed. And the blue one perpendicular, it is there, whereas at zero, zero, Okay, the zero zero same plane. You have dark red, and the dark red shows maximum radiation. It can be either receiving the radiation or it can be transmitting the radiation. So this is a uh, introduction and slight uh, uh, applications, and because it is used for direction finding applications. And uh, the loop antenna gives us uh, smaller antennas, especially for AM radio receivers. He gives an example of this RFID tag. So this RFID tag, uh, which is working at 13.56 megahertz. So if you use a dipole antenna, you may have a length of, let us say, instead of 13.5 megahertz, uh, you have uh, something like one megahertz uh, for a uh, loop antenna. So lambda by four is something like 300 meters antenna or divide by four also, uh, you get something like 75 meters. So the 75 meters is uh, equal to four stories high. You have to build an antenna so high. Uh, whereas if you use a loop antenna, uh, it's the size of a visiting card. You can see that it has been looped, multi-turn loops, etc. So though these are, were not very efficient, they perform adequately because the size is quite small and you can have either air owned or you want it better, you can have a ferrite core uh, a loop sticks. Okay, so now let us come to the syllabus answer. So till now we have just done the introduction. In the introduction, I have given you what exactly um, the antennas are. It can be used, what is the use of these different types of antennas? Okay, the different types of antennas that we are going to study is loop, slot, and horn antennas. So they can be used as an element in an array antenna, or they can be used as an antenna themselves or they can be used as feeds for corner reflectors. They can be working as parabolic reflectors or lens antenna. Then when you have a loop antenna, it is a loop of wire and the ends of the loop of the wire are connected to a transmission line. So through the transmission line, you get the signal and the transmission line is carrying RF current and that RF current will be fed to the loop antenna. The shapes can be circular, rectangular, triangle. The number of turns can be single turn or multi turn, and it can be the core can be solid or hollow. And uh, if it is solid, it can be a dielectric or a ferrite material. It can be a dielectric or a ferrite material. So, when I'm talking about equivalence, you can say that a small electric loop uh, is equivalent to a uh, small linear magnetic dipole where both of them are carrying the same current. 
So when I look at the small loop, uh, when, when do you say a small loop? How do you define a small loop? A small loop antenna is one wherein the dimensions of the coil are quite smaller than the wavelength. And uh, generally they are prone to have poor efficiency and they are used as receiving antennas at low frequencies. So when I look at this magnetic loop, uh, when do you say it is small loop? Technically, uh, the circumference of the loop should be a less than lambda by 10 or one tenth of the wavelength. So this is one example which will show you the equivalence. This uh, is your circular loop of radius A, uh, which is kept at the origin. And the same origin, you have a magnetic dipole. This red color is a magnetic dipole of length L. So both of them are supposed to be equivalent. This is an example of a multi-turn antenna. The second uh, uh, coming thing, we will be talking about the frequency. So if the frequency is increased or the size is increased, you get a standing wave and the previous equivalence that we are talking about. Okay, what was the equivalence that we are talking about? The electric loop, a small loop is same as a small uh, linear di magnetic dipole. So this equivalence goes, instead of this uh, uh, magnetic, uh, linear magnetic dipole, uh, we are talking about a folded dipole antenna. The loop becomes a, a resonant loop or a self-resonant loop and the characteristics change. So small loop is similar to a magnetic dipole antenna, whereas a bigger loop uh, becomes a self-resonant loop. And then those characteristics are similar to that of a folded dipole antenna, especially at higher frequencies like VHF and UHF. Okay, and coming to the radiation. Radiation is uh, a maximum uh, in the plane of the loop. Normal to the plane of the loop, no radiation is received or a null is uh, obtain in this direction. So these are the different radiation patterns uh, for different uh, uh, C lambda. That is your C is your circumference. You can talk in terms of C or you can talk in terms of Ka. Ka is two pi A by lambda. A is the radius. Instead of saying Ka equal to two pi A by lambda, this is Ka. You can also talk in terms of circumference C by lambda. So C by lambda is also two pi A by lambda. So here, what do we have? Uh, C by lambda is equal to uh, 2 pi A by lambda. Here also K is nothing but 2 pi A by lambda. It's one and the same. This is used to find the radiation. So we have one uh, uh, section devoted to the radiation, finding the math mathematically you're deriving the radiation of the, sorry, not radiation, resistance. Uh, we are, we're talking about the radiation resistance of the, uh, antenna for, and using this radiation resistance of the antenna, we will be finding out the uh, current required for the radiated power. And these are some radiation patterns at different frequencies, which shows that uh, normal 90 degree, 90 degree is the normal to the plane. Uh, you have dark blue, whereas zero degree, zero degree is in the same plane. The radiation pattern it has maximum. Applications, it can use for direction finding applications. It can be used in AM radio transmitter receivers. It can be used for RFID tag uh, uh, identifications. Then let us look at the loop antenna. Now this is your syllabus. Here it stands. So the field pattern of a small loop, uh, you can derive it by considering that this loop is square and consists of four short dipoles. Okay, and this is the first thing that we are going to do. What do we do? We consider that uh, the loop is same as uh, this your circular loop. So I assume that a current I is flowing. This is the same as this, okay, a square one. And uh, it is consisting of uh, four dipoles. This is one dipole, linear magnetic. This is your another dipole. This is another dipole and like, like this, another dipole. So it is consisting of four short dipoles. Like I can label it as one, two, three, four. So you can say that both of them are equivalent. This is a small loop. So this small loop uh, is equivalent to this. Uh, assuming that instead of the loop being circular, then the loop is now square. 
and the loop consists of how many poles four uh, short poles and uh, using that we find the field pattern we are going to derive the field pattern we are going to derive the field pattern of a small uh, loop second uh, we are also uh, we can also derive the same field equations okay you have a different method it's a longer method okay you are deriving the same field equations uh, based on the assumption that uh, the small loop uh, instead of having four uh, short linear dipole it's equivalent to a short magnetic dipole instead of four uh, short linear dipoles we can see that uh, uh, the small loop is equivalent to a short magnetic dipole and we'll show the relationships uh, uh, between these two okay and uh, we see that it uh, is the same uh, only the method of differential and then we take the general case of the loop antenna uh, this is loop of any size okay the loop can be of any size the loop is of any size so for this uh, once again we are getting the field equations okay field equations of the loop antenna and uh, so but we have to ensure that there's a uniform current you need some phase shifters or retardation elements to ensure that uh, there is a uniform current and with that uh, we see we derive the field equations we derive the field equations for the loop antenna uh, wherein uh, the loop uh, is not small it's not small the loop can be of any size the loop can be of any size later we also discuss the square loops and uh, we see that uh, there are th three two things we are talking about the far field of the square loop so when we are comparing the fields of the square loop and uh, the circular loops and you say that uh, this field this far field is same the far fields of the both the loops i said the loops can be of uh, different shapes uh, they can be a circular loop or a square loop and when the fields are of different uh, sizes uh, how about their far fields we are talking we are deriving about the field patterns uh, when you are talking about the field patterns uh, uh, if both the circle and the square have the same area have the same area then the far field is the same but if uh, the area is large if the area is large uh, in terms of wavelength if the area is enlarged in the, the far fields are different so as i said uh, the circular loop is the same as a, a square loop in which case uh, when uh, the size of the loop when the size of this loop is less when the size of the loop is more your circular loop and the square loop have different uh, fields the expressions for the far fields become different so we will repeat it again uh, in the later section so now let us start with a small loop uh, this is reference 7.2 from your textbook so what's the aim of this section the aim of the section is finding the far field of a small loop finding the field pattern of a small loop so here we are considering a circular loop of radius a and it is having a uniform in phase current so this is your current i which is flowing through the loop can you see this current i with this arrows so the current i is flowing in this loop and it is having a radius e and then you have a square loop okay now this is a square loop the square loop has a length side length of distance d and once again you have the same phase current here one thing that you remember is both the circular loop and the square loop have the same area so when i talk about uh, the area of the square so when you talk about the area of the square what is the area of the square uh l square or length into breadth and uh, here l is d remember l is d so the area of this is d square so l square is nothing but uh, the length the length is d square 
what is the area of a circle? The area of the circle is pi r square. So this is the area of the circle that's equal to r square, but r is a here. The radius is a. So now when we start the derivation of for finding the field pattern of a small loop, for finding the field pattern of a small loop, we consider a circular loop and a square loop. And in the circular loop, I take a radius A. And in the square loop, it is having a side length D. Side length D. Now you choose the dimensions. You choose the dimensions A and D such that both this circular loop and the square loop, both the circular loop and square loop have the same area. What do you mean by the same area? Uh, D square is equal to pi A square. What is D square? D square is the area of the rectangle. Uh, sorry, square. Pi A square is uh, nothing but pi R square, the area of the circle. The area of the circle. Now next, we assume we need small loop. So when we have small loop, it is equivalent to linear dipole. So we assume that the loop dimensions A are very small compared to the wavelength, or A is lesser lesser than lambda. So in this case, when A is lesser lesser than lambda, instead of A, I can also call it as D. If the D is for the square loop, for the square loop you have D, for the uh, circular loop you have A. When the dimensions A is less than lambda or D is less than lambda, when these dimensions are less and lesser than that of the wavelength, then in this case, the far fields of the circular and square loops are the same, are the same. But if A is greater than lambda or D is greater than lambda, then the far fields are different. So then uh, this circular loop far field is not the same as the far field of the square loop. So be careful. When you have a small loop, when you have a small loop, the far fields of the circular and square loops are same. The far fields of circular and square loops are same. In which case, in which case, when the dimensions are less. So when, a, but the far fields are different when the dimensions are larger when compared to the wavelength. That is A, the dimension of the circular loop is greater than lambda, or D, uh, the dimensions of the square loop is greater than lambda. Lambda is your wavelength. And wavelength is related to frequency also. So in this case, uh, uh, the far fields are different. You have a different set of equations. Now let us uh, look at uh, a small loop. Here, the loop can be treated as four short uh, linear dipoles. Okay, and uh, you can see that uh, they are here. So, uh, instead of a circular loop, you have this. Uh, can you see this loop? Square loop. Okay, now this square loop is consisting of four dipoles. So, one, two, three, four are the dipoles and it is centered at the origin. So I'm saying that this circular loop is same as a square loop, and this square loop is oriented like this. The square loop is consisting of four dipoles. This is one, this is two, this is uh, three, and four. Look at the direction of one, uh, current uh, in one. In one dipole, the current is flowing like this. What about three? In the three, the current is flowing in opposite direction. So similarly, when you consider uh, two and four, when you consider two and four, so assume that this is two and this is four. This is one. Uh, and here, even in this case, uh, two and four, you can see the direction of the dipole is, the current in the dipole is different. For two, it is flowing like this. And for four, it is flowing like this. So now, as I said, um, uh, for a dipole here, let us consider E phi. Okay, let us, uh, it's a far electric uh, field has only the E phi component. So these are the four poles. And for the four poles, this is your H, and this is your theta, H theta. And uh, so this is X, Y, Z plane. This is X, uh, Z, and Y plane. So they are the four uh, 
the electric poles uh, sorry four uh, short uh, linear dipoles going further out of this one two three four so this is one two three four you will choose only two poles uh, so which are the two poles that you are going to choose dipole two and four you can choose uh, dipole one and three also opposite or you can choose uh, two and four uh, to compute uh, the e5 so if you choose uh, two and four so you can uh, get only the yz plane so here it's three dimensions x y and z instead of x y z let us consider only the two dimensions y and z so in this y and z this is my dipole 2 and dipole 4 uh, can you see this is a dot and this is a into mark it shows you the direction of current through it so clockwise and anti clockwise so you can just see this this is the distance between the two poles so can you see the distance between the two poles between 2 to uh, 4 due to 2 to 4 or 1 to 3 the distance is d the distance is d d is a, this is the d so the distance between these two poles is d so i have dipole 2 and dipole 4 the distance between the two dipoles is d d is a side length of the square and uh, this is having a far uh, uh, field we are going to develop this far field and this is let us say this is the theta when you are looking at the far field at some distant point and you have the theta and the distance between this so this is a cross section uh, out of the four poles so we need only two poles uh, we are finding the far field pattern in the yz plane you're finding the far field pattern in the yz plane uh, so we need to get only the two poles the two poles are two and four this uh, in the yz plane they are non-directional so the field pattern is the same as that uh, given by two isotropic point sources. So this two uh, is one point source, this four is another point source. So the electric field here will be uh, due to the sum of these two uh, Fx, that is the field due to dipole two and the field due to uh, dipole four, you both add up, uh, you get the uh, field at the distant point. So now, it's the same as if I have two point sources. Uh, it's as if I have two isotropic point sources and both of them are acting at the same point, at a distant point, let us say D, P. Okay, it's uh, acting at a distant point, uh, P. And what about the equation? Uh, it is given by this equation, E phi naught E to the power minus J phi xi by two. Let us see what is this xi by two. So I have this equation wherein the distance between the two point sources is d and because in the yz plane the dipole becomes a point source in the xyz direction so in the xyz direction this is a linear dipole okay it's not a point source but in yz uh, uh, in yz plane they become point sources there are two point sources uh, dipole 2 and dipole 4 uh, both of them are separated by a distance d and uh, over the z axis they're going to make an angle theta okay now uh, we have said uh, this e phi is equal to minus e phi naught e to the power j xi now what is xi here the xi is uh, uh, at some point here it's making a distance t xi is nothing but 2 pi t by lambda by sine theta 2 pi lambda 2 pi by lambda you can say is beta beta is a cutoff it gives me the cutoff wavelength. So if beta is less than this, if beta is less than this, the wave cannot propagate. So from this point onwards, for this particular wavelength onwards, uh, uh, you can uh, see that it uh, propagates. So the beta is given by this 2 pi lambda and into D. Okay, D is the distance between the poles and uh, that angle uh, Xi, you get this angle xi as 2 pi d by lambda into sine theta that you can approximate it as dr sine theta 
dr sin theta so what is dr dr is 2 pi d by uh, lambda so dr is 2 pi d by lambda and when i look at the effect of uh, dipole 4 okay let me look at the uh, effect of dipole 4 uh, it is e the electric field we assume that both the dipoles are identical we assume that both the dipoles are identical the electric field from each individual one is e phi now the magnitude is same the magnitude is same but since the current directions are different the current uh, directions are different uh, the waveform or the radiating pattern one will be having e plus j phi the other will be having e to the power minus j phi and you also have this uh, uh, minus and plus uh the signs here the magnitude uh because the directions are different and the angle also is e power minus j phi and e power plus j phi this is already done uh, when you're talking about this uh, dipole uh, linear uh, dipoles electric dipoles you're talking about uh, how you get this electric field at a distant point you are getting the electric field at a distant point and these points are separated by a distance t so when you substitute it uh, this in here we get something like this e phi this equation becomes like this e phi is equal to minus 2j uh, e phi not sin dr by 2 sin theta how did we get this remember what is uh, sin theta sin theta is e power j theta uh, minus of e power minus j theta by 2j now this can be expressed as e power j theta this can be expressed as e power minus j theta it can be expressed as e power minus j theta theta is uh, uh, xi by 2 so this is your uh, theta okay e theta is sin by uh, theta 2 we will just look at it and uh, i can take out minus sin outside so if you take out minus sin outside uh, this becomes minus this becomes so this is same and you also take out e power sin not outside so it is minus of uh, now this becomes like this e power j theta by theta minus of e power minus j theta divided by 2j 2j i don't have so 2j you multiply here so this is your 2j you have taken out minus sign and you also have e power uh, phi not outside and uh, what is remaining sign sign is this so we had this uh, e power minus j to sign so sign is 2 pi d by lambda into sin theta and uh, so this is uh, sin theta minus 2j sin theta so you have uh, e phi you can take it as minus e phi not take it outside inside what do we have e power j xi by 2 plus e power minus j xi by 2 okay this is a expression that we have that i can simplify it as minus e phi not this is your e phi not and this is e power j theta plus e power minus j theta i'm sorry this is minus i've taken out minus sign so this will be minus e power j phi by 0 minus of e power minus j theta so this will be represented as 2j sin theta theta as xi by 2 okay this is represented as uh, 2j sin xi by 2 so take this uh, so this will be once again minus 2j Uh, e phi not sin. What is xi? Xi is dr sin theta. So xi is uh, dr sin theta, 
divided by 2. So that's your expression here. So you simplify, you get the expression for uh, two isotropic sources, that is your individual dipoles. Uh, one is having e power g phi, another is having e power minus g phi. The plus j phi has minus e xi naught, the other is having plus e phi naught, uh, depending on, uh, this is the previous derivation of uh, the two isotropic sources. That equation is taken as it is. This is the sum of uh, the two effect of the two electric fields uh, from the two dipoles. And then you express what is xi here. The xi is dr sine theta. That is 2 pi d by lambda by uh, sine theta. And uh, so we have these expressions. Uh, this is from your dielectric one. In this, you take out minus sine, uh, minus and E phi naught. E phi naught and minus sine outside. So minus E phi naught is outside. Internally, you will have uh, minus E becomes uh, plus E power J phi. And this plus uh, will become minus of uh, E power minus J phi by two. So this is E power J theta minus of E power minus J theta. So what is E j theta minus of E power minus j theta? That is 2j uh, sine theta. And what is theta here? Theta is uh, uh, psi by 2. And what exactly is this psi? This psi is uh, dr uh, sine theta. So this uh, uh, sine will remain as it is, the sine. Inside, that psi by 2 is replaced. Psi is replaced by uh, dr sine theta by 2. So this is sine of uh, xi by 2, xi is dr sine theta by 2. So going further, uh, we, all, we have just derived this uh, previous example, e phi is minus 2j uh, e phi naught into sine of this. So let, let us again consider the same equation. And here we have the factor g. Uh, what does a factor J indicate? It in indicates the angle. Okay, it indicates the angle. Remember, I have this uh, uh, condition. This is zero. This is J. J is 90 degrees. Uh, then minus one is 180 degrees. Uh, minus J is uh, 270 degrees. So you know it is in uh, quadrature phase. So this total E fine when you compare with e phi naught, when you compare e phi and e phi naught, e phi naught is of that individual dipole, and phi is due to these two individual dipoles, these two individual dipoles, uh, that gives me the g, that gives me the g. Anyway, next, co co coming further, we assume that uh, d is lesser, lesser than uh, lambda. So that's a small loop, okay? What does d lesser, lesser than lambda specify? It specifies a small loop. It specifies a small loop. And for this small loop, we have, uh, uh, this is becoming minus 2j e phi naught, okay. So we have this uh, condition. If d is lesser, lesser than lambda, and when I consider this, when you consider this, uh, dr sine theta. So what is uh, dr sine theta? So this is sine uh, dr uh, sine theta by 2. And uh, this is once again sine. dr is nothing but, remember this dr is nothing but 2 pi d by lambda. So it is 2 pi d by lambda into sine theta, into sine theta. Now, what is the condition? The condition is D is lesser, lesser than lambda. The condition is D lesser, lesser than lambda. So what happens to D by lambda? D by lambda is lesser, lesser than one. Bring this to the denominator. D by lambda is lesser, lesser than one. Lesser, lesser than one can be something like 0 0.1, 0 0.02, etc. So what happens to this whole term? This whole term is something very small, 0 0.01, etc. And remember your sine theta term. This sine theta term can be taking a values only between 0 to 1. 
um, the sine theta minimum is zero, uh, maximum is one. So this maximum sine theta value can be one, and uh, this term two pi t by lambda, so t is lesser lesser than one. Anything multiplied, so this term becomes small. So this I'll call it as sine omega, or, or no, I mean I can call it as sine some angle. Okay, you can call it as sine angle. We have the expression set uh, when the angle is small, sine zero, it is zero. and uh, sin uh, point 1 it's almost equal to point 1 so when the angle is small okay when the angle is small so we can approximate it by the theta itself sin theta can be approximated as theta itself similarly in this case uh, similarly in this case sin of this dr by 2 sin theta sin of this uh, dr uh, uh, by 2 sin theta a uh, dr is nothing but 2 pi d by lambda dr is nothing but 2 pi d by lambda and i have d lesser lesser than lambda d lesser lesser than lambda implies d by lambda is lesser than 1 so in this case d by lambda is lesser than 1 let us say it's very small 0.01 so the sine of this angle the sine of this angle is very less so when the sine of this angle is very less instead of specifying sine theta so th this is not sign this instead of specifying sign of some angle i can represent this angle directly so i can have this uh, minus j as it is and below you would have had this 2 so this 2 you would have this 2 and this 2 would get cancelled so uh, this 2 and this 2 will cancel now here i have this whole thing sin theta can be represented as it is so i'll have uh, this sign goes this sign goes instead of sign of uh, an angle i can represent as minus 2j e phi not dr by 2 sin theta and when you represent like this uh, the 2 and 2 gets cancelled what is left minus j e uh, phi not into dr into sin theta uh, into phi not. this remember this condition is valid only if d is lesser lesser than lambda or this d by lambda d lesser lesser than lambda means lambda you bring it down d by lambda is lesser lesser than 1 lesser lesser than 1 so continuing further so you can also uh, further uh, uh, check out that your e phi not this has been derived in the uh, previous section of a linear dipole of an individual dipole the e phi not is in a table it is uh, uh, given as e phi not uh, z field due to the individual dipole this has been derived in the section under dipoles we have obtained e phi not as equal to j 60 pi i in square brackets l r lambda where i is the retarded current on the dipole so what do you mean by the uh, retarded uh, current on the dipole and r is the distance from the dipole so i have uh, a dipole here okay you have a dipole here and you have a distance r okay you have a distance r and you are finding let me say this is a point p which is located at a distance r and uh, in this i assume a current i is flowing but this i uh, is not uh, constant it needs a uh, certain time to go so generally i you specify it as instantaneous current as i not into e power j omega t okay we specify it as i not equal to e power j omega t so it requires but it has to travel a distance r it has to travel a distance r so it needs some uh, time for this so you introduce this e power uh, j uh, omega t minus r by c okay minus r by c so you introduce the spatial constant also uh, this is time uh, variable you also have a spatial uh, the thing it is assuming it is traveling uh, with a speed c 
you also have minus r by c. r is the distance. So you need uh, some time. Uh, it has to travel this time t. So this t is not uh, uh, e power g omega t. The t is replaced by omega t minus uh, r by c. Uh, what is r? r is the distance it has. It's not felt instantaneously. If you change the current i, the disturbance, okay, the radiation or the disturbance, it has to propagate to P. It has to propagate to P. That is, it has to travel the distance R. And that's not instantaneous. To show that, instead of saying I naught E power G omega T, we are showing it as I naught E power G omega T minus R by C. R is the distance. We put it in square brackets. So what is the square brackets talking about? It's talking about the retarded current. It's a delayed current on the dipole. So if you are having an effect P here, uh, what is the corresponding uh, retarded uh, current on the dipole is represented by I in square brackets. It is represented by I in square brackets. So now going further, going further. So once we have this uh, E phi naught, that is minus G, E phi naught uh, dr sine theta, then we also have the expression for E phi naught as uh, this is the effect due to individual dipole. This is due to two dipoles, okay, or two and four or one and three. This is due to the two dipoles. This is the effective uh, uh, field, and this is a field due to the individual dipole, that is E phi naught. Substitute this here, uh, so you get E phi is equal to 60 pi uh, I L into dr sine theta by R uh, lambda. Then uh, we use this, uh, the length L, the distance, the length of the uh, dipole is the same as the uh, square, uh, the side length of the square, that is L equal to D. And we also have this dr equal to 2 pi D by lambda. The dr is 2 pi L and A. And then once you substitute these two things, so what are we substituting? So I have 60 pi as it is, then I as it is, Instead of L, I have D. Instead of L, I have D. And so instead of DR, you have 2 pi D uh, by lambda. And uh, I have the sine theta as it is. And here I have R lambda, R lambda. You can also use the next one. So this D into this D. This D into D is D square. So that becomes E that becomes E. Denominator, what do we have? Uh, denominator, we have R lambda squared. This lambda into lambda, you have this. And you have the sine theta as it is, uh, the sine theta as it is. And the 60 into 2 becomes 120. And 60 into 2 becomes 120. And this pi into this pi becomes pi squared. And then I will remain as it is. The I remains as it is. So the 16 to 2 becomes 120 pi into pi pi square. And then uh, the D into D is D square. The D square is replaced by A. Denominator, you have R into lambda and another lambda, lambda into lambda, lambda square. So on uh, substituting all this, so you have this expression. E phi is 120 pi square, then that I as it is, sine theta as it is, numerator is A, denominator is R into lambda square, the denominator R into lambda square. So this is the expression for the far field E phi. This is the expression for the far field E phi. And this equation gives the instantaneous value of, instantaneous values of E phi component. Suppose you want to get the peak value, you have to replace the retarded current, I in square brackets by I naught, uh, which is the peak current in time on the loop. So we have just seen uh, the derivation of E phi. Now let us see the derivation of uh, H theta or H naught. So when I'm talking about the component uh, H theta, 
uh, especially for free space, it becomes H naught. You obtain it by dividing the far field E sign with the intrinsic impedance of the medium. The medium here is free space. So for free space, uh, it is 120 pi, which we already have done in different module. So you get a H magnetic field component by uh, dividing the far field over this 120 pi, and that gives you the expression for H naught. So you have this E phi, can you see this? Uh, so this is a square loop uh, with four dipoles, one, two, three, four. Uh, we are considering the effect in YZ plane for E phi. For Y E phi, the far field Y E phi in YZ plane, uh, due to the effect of the two poles, dipoles, which are the two poles, two and four. And this will become like point sources in the YZ plane. In the YZ plane, they become point sources. And uh, we have E phi naught as the uh, field effect due to one of the point sources. And then we add up both of them and we get E phi. And that expression of E phi, you divide it by the intrinsic impedance, uh, which is 120 pi for free space we get the H naught. So this is your E phi value, that is 120 pi square i, that you divide it by 120 pi. So 120 goes pi square, only pi is left, i in square brackets, that is your retarded current, sine theta a by lambda square, and r that remains. So this concludes this portion. That is, this portion is about small loop antenna. The next portion is about the loop antenna for a general case. So this is 7.4 in textbook, uh, or three that we are referring. And the uh, general case, when we talk about general case, it means that it is for the loop of any size. For the loop of any size, uh, we are talking about. So today, let us uh, recap uh, briefly, very briefly. So. So we just showed the syllabus. The syllabus was the introduction and the small loop. So we have done this uh, introduction on the small loop. And then the loop pattern is a general case is the next uh, PPT. And we have seen the introduction, the types of antennas and the loop antenna. And uh, what, what do you mean by a small loop? The dimensions of the loop are smaller than the wavelength. And uh, the types, you can see that the small loop is the same as a magnetic dipole. So there's a small loop, a circular loop antenna, is the same as a, a dipole. And we also have seen uh, some of the radiation pattern. These are all the introduction. And then we have started the derivation. How did you derive the field pattern of a small loop? We ensure that the circular loop is the same as a square loop. And in the square loop, we have sh four short uh, linear dipoles. And uh, so this is your circular loop, and that is same as a square loop over the same area. So here the area is length into length, that is d into d, d square. And this is the area of the circle, that is pi a square. We assume that the area is same. And we also assume that uh, the dimensions a is lesser lesser than lambda or d is lesser lesser than lambda. Whether the circular loop or the square loop, uh, the dimensions are quite lesser than the wavelength. So in that case, uh, the far fields of both the loops are the same. And now you consider the square loop. So instead of the circular loop, we are considering the square loop with four dipoles, one, two, three, four. And uh, these are all four short linear dipoles. And for this, we have only the E phi component. Out of the three components, electric field component, only E phi is present. And we also ensure that in the YZ plane, so this is the three dimensions, X, Y, Z plane, and with the square loop with the center of the origin, that is uh, replaced with the YZ plane. And these dipoles are represented by, uh, what you can say, uh, point sources. So you can say that there are two isotropic point sources, and each of them will have uh, uh, an electric field. Each of them will have an electric field, E phi naught. So what is E phi here at a distant point? What is E phi? It is uh, the uh, addition of these two fields. One is uh, due to dipole two and dipole four. In dipole two and four, uh, the current directions is opposite. So the magnetic field also will be opposite uh, direction. 
and the angle uh, when you add up it is e phi is a phi by 2 and minus and what is this sign it is 2 pi d by uh, 2 pi d by lambda into sine theta 2 pi d by lambda you can call it as dr into sine theta d is the distance between the two dipoles and uh, once you substitute this uh, we get e phi equal to minus 2 j into sine theta and uh, as uh, d is less and lesser than lambda, uh, the sine of this angle, sine of uh, uh, omega, whatever you call sine, that can be represented by the angle itself because this is quite small, this term. So you get an expression like this, minus j, and the 2, 2 goes. So this sine term goes. And uh, when you substitute it, we get this. Uh, we also have the expression for E phi naught of an individual dipole as J 60 pi I in square brackets as a retarded current. And uh, this is acting on a, a point uh, at a distance R from the dipole. And uh, you put this E phi naught in this expression of E phi. So you get the expression of E phi as 60 pi A. And we also use uh, approximations that the L is same as D and area A is d square and dr is 2 pi d by lambda. So you get E phi is 120 pi square i sine theta. So this is an instantaneous value. So if you have to get the peak value of E phi, the retarded current i has to be replaced by i naught. Okay, that is the peak current. i equal to i naught e power j omega t and the retarded current is j omega t minus r by c. You can also get the component uh, h theta by dividing E5 with the uh, intrinsic impedance, it is 120 pi, and that gives me the H theta. So this finishes the two equations, uh, E5 and H theta, which we'll be using it uh, further in the next few sections. So the next uh, topic will be about uh, the loop antenna. So thank you.